I think today was a day that I really wanted to sit down and have a chat. I started dating apps again. I've been on them for about a month and a half. And through casual dating, I have learned a lot about myself. funny, every time I sit down to film after a really long time, it's difficult for me to convey my emotions and my thoughts and how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. I'm back again because anytime I sit down and make a YouTube video, for me it's very healing and cathartic. And if you're listening to this on my podcast, Proper Madness, it's the same thing. I started trying to put myself back out there because I felt like I was in a healthy enough place to allow someone to come into my life. I think for a really long time, I was hoping to find a long-term partner through real life. In that though, I think I was still shutting myself off because I wasn't really, I wasn't really being proactive in it. I think I was just sitting around waiting, expecting someone great to like drop out of the sky while I go be independent and go eat alone and maybe do things by myself and maybe someone will pop in. And So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna casually date and have some fun go out on a ton of dates and just see if I meet someone that way without taking dating so seriously. In doing that, I did have a lot of fun. I was probably going on one to two dates a week for like five weeks. <laughs> and that's not me bragging, that's not me trying to say, oh, I get a lot of dates, no. That's me saying, you know what, I got to know so many people that I decided to give all of them a chance and meet them in person and see what was there. Here's how that went. The first few people that I was going out on dates with, I noticed that like there wasn't, there wasn't a physical chemistry with me and them. Like I just, I just didn't, I didn't feel physically attracted to them and that's okay. However, I value, valued them as a person and as people and um, I had great times. They were wonderful gentlemen. No one was mean to me. No one was rude. No one was um, disrespectful in any way. Sometimes I think it's very difficult to know right away if the person you're on a date with is the right person for you. Unless there's like some very, very glaring red flags and you need to be mindful of that or they disrespect you in some way. But if they're a really nice person, you're attracted to them and you feel like something's there, you should probably give it a chance. So that's what I did. And the ones that I gave a chance also ghosted me. I've had a lot of empty promises on dating apps. I've had people tell me all the things that I really want to hear. I've had people shower me with love bombing. I've had people try to build this deep, intimate connection with me before even meeting me in person. So what ended up happening is through casual dating, unfortunately, I was faced with more healing that I need to do on myself. I was constantly rejected and it doesn't feel great because some people are straightforward with their rejection and some people are very passive like ghosting or making excuses for why they can't meet up and then never following up again. So didn't take it too seriously, which I'm, I'm glad of no normally. When I meet someone I really like, I kind of like fantasize and romanticize this whole future with them and I don't even know this person, which is wildly unhealthy. You cannot meet someone for the first time, second time, really know them on a deep level unless you build a friendship first, which brings me to my next situation. There came a point in time where this time I made, I made some mistakes. I made some mistakes. Um, I was not emotionally stable. I let my PTSD triggers and my emotional reactivity get the best of me. I met someone that I really enjoyed and that I really liked. And in first, in first meeting this person, I was like, oh, I feel like something's missing. So um, I did the responsible thing that no one else ever did for me, which was I verbalized that I was no longer interested in this person in a romantic way. And then I just kind of see something more along the lines of a friendship. 
So our friendship was made and it went well and then all of a sudden I met up with this person and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I made a mistake. Like I genuinely made a mistake. I actually really like this person and I'm super attracted to them. But I still wasn't sure if they were the right person for me long term. And I think that's okay. I don't think you're supposed to know right away if someone is for you long term. And that's something that I think a lot of people on the internet and TikTok and social media still perpetuate. You're not supposed to be 100% sure about someone right off the bat because you don't know them. You need to really get to know someone else to understand if they're the right person for you. And unfortunately for me, with all the trauma that I have been through in relationships, and sexual assault, I figured out pretty quickly that I have some pretty deep-rooted intimacy issues and triggers that I really need to work through. I have this very strange tendency that as soon as I start to like someone a lot, I, I push them away, I start acting erratic, I start being a version of myself that I don't really like very much, if you've been following me for a while, um, you know that I have this persona in my subconscious that I call Crazy Savvy. Um, and what Crazy Savvy does is she, bless her, I think she's there to like protect me and um, look out for me. And sometimes I don't listen to her, but she's always been right. But what she does is if she ever senses that we can't be safe around someone, she starts to sabotage. And just because I don't feel safe around someone doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means they're not the right person for me. People assume all the time that they think that because I'm very sweet and soft-spoken and I'm a kind, good-hearted human being and I have a big heart that I'm always going to be nice 24-7 and let people walk all over me. And <laughs> that's not the case. I think if you ask any of my closest friends, the most common, the most common phrase <laughs> used is the second someone disrespects me or crosses a boundary or does something I don't like, I'm no longer a nice person. I'm, I then become my protector. I then pe become the strong version of myself that's like, hey, whoa, no. I don't think casual dating is for me. I learned very quickly that it's not for me because I genuinely care about people. Once I get to know them, I start to see not only who they are on the surface, but who, who they are beneath all the crap that they might put up as a front to protect themselves. I believe very much that people come into our lives to teach us something, to teach us a lesson, to help us discover more about ourselves and what we need to heal. I think when you go through intimacy trauma, on all levels. It's, um, I never really sat down and dealt with it. And then I tried to put myself into the casual dating scene of trying to be this confident, badass. I can get anyone I want. Oh, I'm going out on dates all the time. And you know what? It felt really good for my ego. It felt really good for validation. It really made me feel great until all those things were happening where I was just constantly rejected. Then it kept perpetuating that deeper intimacy issue that I have inside. I'm a sensitive soul. I feel deeply. I feel intensely. I'm a deep thinker. I, I care about people and I'm genuinely empathetic. And I think for a long time I tried to fight that because I thought that being that type of person made me weak and vulnerable and a doormat and it doesn't. But it's something I think a lot of people need to realize is just because you meet someone who is like that doesn't mean that it gives you permission to walk all over them or to tell them exactly what you want to hear to deceive them. Casual dating at, at the, in this point in time, to me, confuses me. Because what we're doing is we, we're building these intense connections with other people and almost exchanging energy and intimacy with them, but not stopping to realize that we are human beings. We are human beings. That's another human being that you are interacting with. 
They have thoughts, feelings, and emotions and trauma just like you. I have no... I don't, I don't think anything bad about anyone who does it because I did it. And I had a ton of fun. It felt great. I had my needs fulfilled. Whatever. I did it in a safe, ethical way. I didn't try to go out and hurt anyone. I didn't try to do anything malicious in any way, shape, or form. And sometimes all people are really looking for in that point in time is something casual and that's okay. Like there's no shame in that. But don't get into something casual with the hopes that it may turn into something long term. You know how many times I've done that? In past relationships, well I wouldn't even call them relationships, in past dynamics with partners, I was very much faced with similar situations where um, I gave in to the casual fling side of dating with a romanticism and um, wearing my heart on my sleeve and that's dangerous. It's not something that makes me feel nourished in any way in my soul. If anything, it actually made me feel more alone. Too often people dance around how they're really thinking and feeling. The more you date to try to meet your soulmate or the one, the less you're gonna find them. That's what I learned. I cannot write someone off right away because I'm scared. I got scared of how I felt about someone so quickly that I pushed them away. I do that because both times that I was assaulted, one was by a stranger and the other was by someone that was my best friend. And um, that one hurt the most. Because what that did to my subconscious was it made me think that I could never get close to someone again because they might betray me, they might hurt me, they may take advantage of me or use me. And a lot of my old dynamics in relationships, casually especially, I always felt like this object. Like I was an object used for their physical needs and desires. Now I would willingly go into them and I would, that's what I thought I wanted. That's what I thought I craved. That's what I thought I needed. But what I was doing is I was purposely putting myself in situations to perpetuate that self-defeating belief that I've always had. You know, maybe if I gave in to what they wanted and I didn't fight it, that they treat me they treat me better, but no. And this is a huge part of my trauma that I haven't really faced or dealt with. And um, I can't lump myself into this generalized population of people who love to have casual sex because to me, that is something that is sacred. I'm a very sensual, physical person. And when I give those parts of myself to someone, I want to feel connected to them. If you've gone through anything that I've gone through, just know you're not alone. And I never really just put myself out there and got to know so, so many wonderful people. I never got to do that. I feel like I'm making it sound like I've slept with a lot of people this year, and that's not true. <laughs> when I say casually dating, I mean just like going out on dates. That's it. No, that's not what I mean. I only had... Um, one person recently that I was casually seeing in a physical way. It was very short-lived. I think this next part of my life and, and chapter of my life is owning that like sensuality within me and realizing and understanding that my physicality and my energy is precious and that I really need to pick and choose who I share that with. We're human beings, we're here to connect, we're here to feel deeply, we're here to love. I think we gotta stop running away from that. I'm gonna take a break again from dating apps. Focus on what fuels my soul. And focus on myself and bettering myself and healing my sexual assault trauma. And working on my intimacy issues. And go from there. I'll probably do another sit down chat about what happened to me because I think it's something that a lot of people can learn from. And um, as you know, I don't do trigger warnings on any of my material because I do not believe in them. 
So, if anything I said in this episode triggered you in any way, I suggest that you reach out to a licensed professional therapist or talk to someone close to you. If something like that has happened to you and you're not speaking up about it, I want you to know you're not alone and it's not your fault. It's not your fault that someone else took advantage of you and it's not your fault that you were hurt and it's not your fault because you didn't know, you know. Sometimes people do shitty, selfish things and there's nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is rise up and realize that you're much stronger than you think you are. That is all I have for you today. If you liked this video, or you like my channel, and you like my material, or if you're listening to this on Proper Madness, please be sure to give me a follow and subscribe, and also rate the episode, because that helps me out a lot as well. But other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember, you have to go through the eye of the storm to see the clear horizon ahead. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.